Well, Cougar baseball fans, Jason Shepard, along with the head coach of the BYU baseball team, Mike Littlewood. Coach, a, another successful road trip. The team's now seven and ten through the first ten, seven and three through the first ten games, and taking two of three from a pretty good Lamar team this past weekend. Yeah, Lamar was a good team, uh, a mid-major conference, and they'll be in the top third of that conference. And they had they had a couple good players right in the middle of their lineup, but uh, they had a lot of confidence and went about things the right way. Fortunately, we pitched it, played played good defense, and and uh, I thought. You know, out of the 27 innings we played, we outplayed in 26 innings. So I felt pretty good about that weekend. Well, we have talked so much, whether it was leading up to the season, during the season, post-game. Pitching has been such uh, a strength for this team. And it's not just the starters. It's the guys coming in in relief. Pitching overall, it was on showcase once again this weekend in Beaumont. Yeah, I mean, in baseball, we always talk about pitching wins. You know, uh, pitching, good pitching beats good, good hitting. And we kind of proven that the last three weeks. We, it's it's really nice to see guys go in there and throw more than one pitch for a strike, locate where they want to, be competitive, uh, be competitive in the strike zone, pitch to contact, all those things that you want out of your pitching staff. And you know our guys, man, everybody who goes in there is is upper 80s, low 90s, and and uh, spotting up. So uh, Coach Bradshaw has done a great job with them. Uh, he's got them pitching with confidence and. Um, you know, Jordan Wood's been our leader, but everybody else has yeah. followed suit. And really, everybody, 99% of the time this year that we've taken them out, we've done an incredible job. The other thing that really stood out over this past weekend was the opportunity to get some of the young players in for some significant playing time. Guys like Jaron Hall played, Austin Deming, Zach Peterson, uh, Abe Valdez. Yeah. I mean, all these guys, Hobbs Nyberg came in as a pinch hitter. Not only were they able to come in, but they were able to get some pretty significant at bats. Speaking of uh, Sapiti and Valdez, they had three three RBI on Saturday. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it's really important to get those guys in. Just talking about individually, Hobbs Nyberg pinch runs for us. I think it was uh, Thursday night, game one, in a one-one ball game, and gets a good read off the shin, a ball in the dirt off yeah. the shin guard of the catcher, takes second base, and it helps us get one run, which leads to three more runs, which helped us win that game. I mean. That's that's just using his athletic ability and his instinct to, to help us out and got a pinch uh, pinch at, hit at bat. I think he grounded out, but had a decent at bat. Austin Deming got had three good at bats uh, a, a couple days ago. Abe Valdez gets a big yeah. double for us. Yeah, caught really well. Uh, but Zach Peterson, who hasn't played this year, I started at second base just because in practice uh, in inner squad he puts together great at bats. And uh, you know maybe I should have pinch hit for him in certain situations earlier, and I thought I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Zach a chance because we've talked about it, uh, I, you and I just he doesn't do anything less than 100. percent Doesn't matter if it's practice or pregame or inter squad or weightlift, whatever he does, he does it 100. Uh, percent That's my kind of guy. And I uh, I gave him a chance, and he had three good at bats and played great defense for us Saturday, help us win. Funny story about Zach, and I said this on the broadcast. I was telling Tuckett Slade, my broadcast partner and BYU Baseball Director of Operations. More importantly. Yeah. <laughs> I was telling him, it took me probably an entire road trip to realize when you guys called Zach Peterson PD, you were not talking about Ryan Sapiti. No. I think other people call, I don't call Ryan Sapiti PD. I call him, I call him Ryan. Uh, but I, I call Zach Peterson PD, and I think a, a lot of other people do. But I think when I say that, Ryan Sapiti and Zach go look at me like that. So. Yeah, everybody's got their nicknames. Yeah. Some of them we can't mention uh, <laughs> on the air, but uh, yeah, it's kind of fun. So, as we mentioned, seven and three through the first ten games, and now you get the opportunity to come home, and you're going to be home for a while. We'll get into that in a second. First and foremost, though, it's the home opener Tuesday night uh, against UVU, so a, a team that's close. There'll be a lot of fans here. Uh, just your thoughts on finally being able to play a home game? Yeah, it's nice. I mean, the three the the, the three weeks to open up our season is always tough. Um, it, the turnaround guys are, I mean, guys are in class one or two days a week. It's tough on them. We proctor a bunch of tests for them on the road. It's So not only do they have the pressure of traveling and playing on the road in, in hostile environments, um, it's they have to deal with school. And so there's a lot a lot of pressure on, on those kids. I'm tired. I know, and I didn't play in a game, so I know that those guys are a little bit tired. So it's nice to get back home. Uh, we'll talk about the Gonzaga series in a, in a minute that's been moved here. So we'll be home for a full month. Now we just need to cross our fingers for the weather, but uh, we look at Utah Valley and Utah, uh, just as those in-state rivalries, just as important as league games. And so it's really, really important, not only the home opener, uh, 
Deep going strong, but uh, especially Utah Valley, just going to be a good team. Well, and after Tuesday, then you have a four-game series against Wisconsin-Milwaukee team that a lot of people may not necessarily know a lot about. The team's coming in six and three, maybe could have an extra win, could be seven and two at this point. Um, they ended up losing a game late to Arizona, but this is a team you'll play Thursday and then a double header on Friday here at Miller Park and then wrap up the four game series on Saturday. That's a pretty good team coming in. Yeah, they are. They're big and physical and they're a veteran team. Uh, they, they beat Arizona the first game, lost a close from the second uh, game on Saturday, and then actually had a four run lead in the ninth yesterday, which was Sunday against Arizona. Arizona with two outs in the ninth and nobody on got a walk in five consecutive hits to walk him off. And so uh, Arizona's a really good team. Uh, so we have to be ready for, for Milwaukee. They're going to be a good team. And, and uh, again, the veteran teams are tough at this level just because they know how to put together good at-bats. They're not going to be intimidated. They expect to go on the road and win. And so I like the challenge. I mean, we want to play good teams, whether it's on the road or, or at home. And uh, that's just the way. It's interesting how once in a while you get those mid-major conferences teams and then they'll have a really up year. Um, that I think it looks like Milwaukee's got that kind of a team this year. You mentioned the Gonzaga series, and you were going to be home for a while anyway, but now it's extended because it was announced last week that the conference opening series against Gonzaga originally scheduled to be played in Spokane because of snow and weather up in that area. They've just decided to go ahead and move that series. You guys and uh, Gonzaga's Wolves of the League agreed to move that here to Miller Park. What, what went into that, and, and what, what does that necessarily mean then for the season next year in terms yeah. of that series? Well, basically, we're going to flip. So they'll come here this year. We'll go there next year, which we were supposed to you know, go there next year and play at home. So that just flips. Uh, it works out okay schedule-wise. We're not going to end up playing six on the road and three at home next year, which was one of our concerns looking at that. So it, 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 it's pretty equitable. I mean, it works out. I'm sure they would rather be at home uh, anytime you can be at home. But uh, they're a good team. They have – Coach Maktoff called me. Uh, that's our head coach called me probably three weeks ago and said, hey, we've got eight inches of snow. In normal conditions, it should melt off, but it's the temperature's not supposed to get out of the high 20s, low 30s, or so let's look at moving it. Last week, he called me back and said, let's just make a chain, and conference office approved it, and we're good with that. So we'll go up there next year. They'll be here this year, and uh, everything's good. One of the players that we mentioned a few minutes ago was Jared Hall. He was able to, uh, to get some playing time this past weekend. Now with spring football officially starting, what will his role be with baseball, say, over the next month while, while football practices are going on? Well, it's nice that it works out. We're home almost the entire time of spring football. And I, I actually talked to Jared after the series a little bit before we got on, after we showered and got on, before we got on the bus. And I asked him what kind of like go through your schedule. And they'll get done with football practice about 5, 15, 5 30, and he'll just come over. Uh, that He'll get his work in. He's kind of limited on hours that way, but um, what he can do. But he'll have the same role. I mean, uh, the only thing he won't be able to do is go through pregame workout with us, and so it's it's going to be hard to start him if he shows up at five thirty and there's a six o'clock game. But that you know his role isn't to be an everyday starter. He did a great job Saturday stepping in for us, and I, I took uh, Danny Jelich out of a game on Friday um, for missing a sign and and uh, for various reasons. But uh, and Jaron filled in, but Danny's our starting center fielder, um, and, and I think Jaron understands his role. It's a big role, uh, whatever it's going to be, pinch runner, pinch hitter, go in defensive replacement or start here and there. So it'll it'll be nice to have home games during spring football. Uh, we're just going to play by your every day's a new day with Jaron. So back to the UVU game tomorrow, the home opener. Um, typically those Tuesday games are kind of staff days for the pitchers. Is that how you're kind of right now looking at tomorrow? Yeah. You know, some, some of them are staff days. Uh, oftentimes, we'll, we'll name a starter and let him run out there for a little bit. But tomorrow, the way, with five, four games on the weekend, five of the week, we'll probably do a staff day um, where we script the innings and just have another guy ready in case a guy runs into trouble. Whether a guy throws two innings or one inning, uh, I'll, I'll talk to Mike Bradshaw, our pitching coach, in, in a second. Uh, work that out, script it for, for each guy, and, and kind of go from there. Coach, it's been uh, it's been a fun start to the season. I know everybody, including BYU baseball fans, are excited to have this team at home. And again, UVU, Tuesday night, Miller Park. Uh, the game will get underway at 6 o'clock Mountain Time right now, and uh, that game will be seen on the W.TV and heard on ESPN 960. Coach, it's been a lot of fun so far. Looking forward to a home game tomorrow. Keep it rolling. There we go. You bet. Go Cougars. Hey!